Stefan van der Geersen, who's the general manager of cybersecurity at Networks Unlimited, joins us to talk about cybersecurity and uh, certainly something that's a very prominent topic uh, in the world that we're living in right now. When you look at how many, uh, you know, how many threats there are, many millions of people still working remotely, um, and and there's lots of ways of looking at cybersecurity and analyzing it. So, uh, Stefan, it's great to see you. Um, just a quick one. I mean, is is are cybersecurity threats greater in at the beginning of say January 2020 versus January 2019 before the kind of uh, coronavirus really took effect around the world? Is it worse now than it was last year? Uh, I like yeah. Thanks for for the opportunity. Firstly, um, to answer your question. It's definitely a lot more relevant. Um, obviously, with people working remotely, the edge of the network has shifted quite significantly. We've got a lot of people working outside of the network, making sure that they can't access the, the corporate server, the corporate identity is what they need to, to authenticate under. And obviously, guys sitting at home have free reign to watch anything they want, do anything they need to do. And by that exposing their, their endpoints quite a, quite a, quite a bit, and you never know what they can then VPN back into your corporate network. So mm -hmm. that's why we're actually going to talk around one of the theories that we're applying that's more around physical policing uh, than cybersecurity policing, but we've adopted it into a cybersecurity kind of okay. methodology. I'm, I mean, I'm hearing, I'm hearing this... Uh... You know this this theory, should I say? A lot of uh, you you guys in the cybersecurity industry use it, and I've heard this term bandied around: the broken window theory. Can you explain what this broken window theory is all about? Yeah, sure. So the broken window theory came from George Kelling, a criminologist, back in 1982, uh, when they looked at physical policing in the first time. They looked at if a window if a build a window of a building was broken and left unrepaired, the rest of the the building would go to disrepair. Now, they've done a couple of studies around this. They've actually taken a car and put it in back in the day in the Bronx in New York and one in California, two very different kind of uh, areas. The one was within 24 hours stripped of its parts. The one in the affluent area was left unarmed until they actually went and created a bit of uh, damage to the car and then it was ransacked within 24 hours. Now, that in a nutshell just means that look after your basic policies and your basic um, fundamentals uh, may it be from a from a physical window or a virtual window in the cyber security space but yeah okay well that makes sense but i mean when you look at it and, I, and i've heard that term used before by the policing in new york as you also touched on a second i mean if there's no direct evidence on face value for example that a company is broken should we say um, how, how do you apply this kind of thinking to what you and I are talking about right now, cybersecurity? How do you apply it to yeah, that way? So we use the phrase uh, broken window, broken business. And that looks at the, the fundamentals of the principle that's being applied to the, the company that's building a security posture at the end of the day. So there, there's no physical correlation and we can't see that the, the company has a flaw in their cybersecurity. But it's just knowing that the, the bare fundamentals is potentially for the rest will be, that'll follow will then go into disrepair. Okay, that's very interesting. So, I mean, when you talk about these principles, what are these principles that you allude to? And when you look at it uh, from, you know, small, medium, large companies, I mean, how, how do they uh, affect these different companies, whatever size they might be? Yeah, like so cybersecurity in its own form applies to everyone, irrespective of size. Uh, you can be a small, medium, large enterprise, but you have to build your security posture from the bottom up. Um, so if you kind of look at all these things is, let's start at the beginning. And one of the most fundamental things that, that we as uh, industry see is the lack of using proper human resources. Um, a lot of the smaller companies, unfortunately, start using this term where they go get inadequate skills to build their, their network from a segmentation, from an AD integration, uh, from a password management perspective. They just do the just enough mentality. Um, and that's actually more harmful than spending a little bit of uh, money in terms of investing it in your, your baseline than throwing products at a problem. And we see that more often where a lot of the, the small organizations just do the bare minimum and then they start unfortunately unravel at, at the baseline where they then start 
throwing money at the problem by getting new vendors instead of just fixing the problem. So like it's a small things for us. Like once you start building your network, make sure that you have proper segmentation. You've got great integration into your AD with great password management. A lot of the smaller companies, which you don't see in the larger companies, they do effective password uh, cycling. So they don't have the issue of changing password. That's automated. And a lot of the smaller companies that, uh, how can I say, almost irrelevant or unsecure passwords. It's their dogs, it's where they live, it's password one, two, three, four. So it's going back to, to making sure that that is what you, you need to do right in the first place. Well, that's quite interesting. So, I mean, what are those items that you talk about, uh, talk about that form the, the, the baseline of your, you know, your security posture that you call it? Um, and, and, you know, it does seem to be overlooked quite a bit. So there's definitely a, a massive gap there in a vulnerability. Exactly. So the, the vulnerability management is probably one of your, your easiest aspects in, in your posture. So if you look at the vulnerability management as a whole, the world that we live in, the code that that's, it was initially designed for, uh, call it switches, firewalls, or even applications that we use on a daily basis, that is built from an efficiency perspective, not from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you just do your daily updating on the outstanding updates for, might be from Microsoft, the Apple, uh, Adobe, those are probably one of your biggest fundamentals that people overlook a lot of the time and actually get caught out because the hackers outside of the network throwing uh, attempts at your, your staff to get them to lure to click on something that will uh, open up a PDF that then becomes vulnerable for, for them to VPN or actually get gain into your network. So it's, it's really quite complex. I mean, when you think about the, what these guys are using and the ways and the methods that they're using to try and get into networks to steal stuff and cause damage and cause harm to organizations, I mean, organizations must be petrified. When you look at the Papier Act that's coming this year, um, you know, people need to be prepared. The, the data needs to be protected properly. I mean, how often is the user... Uh, an attack vector into an organization. I mean, you touched on that earlier, but how exactly is that done? So the user is probably the easiest way to, to gain entry into any organization for that matter. There's a couple of ways that we see that from the almost a, a bare attack where they will go and distribute CDs and USB drives in the car park where someone will pick it up and plug it in. Because unfortunately, the human element, we are all curious. If you find something, you want to see what's on there, you've now got something. And without even thinking, you plug it into your corporate network, and that all of a sudden then gets compromised. Now, and that's just the, the, the one aspect. The other aspect is what we use the most in our daily use of email. Uh, unfortunately, we all get so busy, especially now working from home. There's no quick, I'm going to walk to my... A uh, colleague down the corridor to ask, why is he sending me a finance document when I wasn't expecting one or a statement for a customer or anything like that? Unfortunately, the email security and the fence has gone out the window. Um, and if you don't build up your secure email gateway from the bottom up and making sure you have the right rules in place, I think that is potentially your, your biggest vector for attack going into your network, especially in this modern day with people sitting outside the corporate network. So I'm astonished that you know people will take a, a USB drive that you got from you know somebody, and uh, you'll take this drive and put it into your your computer um, at your work computer without even realizing that there's something that's malicious about this that can really cause you know quite a bit of damage to your network. I mean. When you look at that network segmentation, you're talking about, um, you know, password management, which is very, very important. I mean, the email security that you just touched on that acts as a, as a broken policy, you could say. I mean, what are the other kind of aspects that are, that are relevant to, in today's cybersecurity world? So, okay, just before we kind of move off that, so we, we quickly spoke about the USB thing. And one of the, the scariest things for me still is going to cybersecurity events in South Africa and we were able to actually go to a Gallagher or to Samsung Convention Center. How many times do you see people there still give you USB drives? Yes. You don't actually know what's on them. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and you, don't, you don't think twice about putting it into your machine. I'm guilty yeah. of it as well. No, I think we all are. It's just the human behavior at the end of the day. But yeah. to, to come back to, to the first thing is, um, 
Phishing is unfortunately one of the biggest vectors of attack that there is at the moment. So if you purely based on your baseline and companies overlook it so often is making sure that you have a great user awareness training program. There's wonderful products in the South African market. There's products that's actually built locally uh, as well as international vendors where they go and tell you what to look for. If an email comes in, what do you look for? How do you react to it? How do you escalate it? Is there a reporter button in there that says, this thing looks malicious. How do I send this to someone without emailing it to them to actually verify that this is not an advanced threat, that it goes through a sandbox and comes back and gets high, hygienized, for, for lack of a better term, to go into, into your network again. So there's definitely a lot of vectors that we need to look at. And coming down to, to the root cause, and we spoke about it, is make sure that your, your AD is set up great, your network segmentation, so that some the right people can only see certain elements of the network. Look at your endpoint security, look at your, your email efficiency. Well, without those bare basics and necessities that, that we see in the, the security posture, you are leaving yourself vulnerable to, to a lot of these things. Now, and I think one of the, the big, best, biggest things at the moment is endpoint security for us. The traditional antivirus has become totally irrelevant where they used to size scan signatures. We are all now looking at uh, new products out in the market, the, the EDRs, the XDRs, making sure that there's the fileless attack, behavioral analytics is, is applied because we don't have the resources to look at what's going on on a distributed network at the moment during this COVID times. Oh, it's, it's really scary. I mean, um, just listening to you and you talk about this broken window, we have to have a, a radical relook and rethink how we do cybersecurity because it's actually the way we were doing it pre-lockdown is not relevant anymore. You know, when you look at people working from home, for example, um, and you look at how millions and millions of people, you know, those are millions and millions of vulnerabilities uh, to the organization's networks. Um, uh, how, how does this affect that security posture we talked about? I know we spoke about it earlier, but I mean, just thinking about it loud um, and, and, you know, in context of what we've been talking about, all the other dangers that you talk about, I mean, working from home must be the biggest vulnerability for any organization right now. Absolutely. So if you kind of look at the edge, where we deem the edge, the edge has moved. The edge is now sitting at the endpoint. So there is no more protection behind the firewall that sits in the office. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of that has migrated so quickly that how do we do that? So at the moment, how do you get that security without having that additional manpower they're needing to manage, update, install. So the firewall was all the, the first be all and end all, but all of a sudden we've seen newer technologies come to light like SASE, which is now the, the latest and greatest where everything can be managed in the cloud. You don't need to have infrastructure. Um, and we kind of see the role of our system integrators and MSSPs kind of changing over, over the last while. People are looking to outsource their security to someone, especially in the, the SME space, where they can get someone to, to do all their, their security checks for them. And they are actually then guaranteed that they've got a reputable vendor behind it. Because I think that's one of the biggest pitfalls that, that we find at the moment as well. People are scrambling now that people are working from home. They are selling them home firewalls that they buy off the internet. Now, these things haven't been validated. You don't know, know what signature base lies behind it. So we're making sure that people are now go and do their research, go to a reputable system integrator or MSSP for, for, the, for that matter, to make sure that when looking at your broken window policy, tick the couple of boxes that's out there at the moment. Now, is the, the working environment going to change over the next six to 12 months? We, we doubt it very much. I think they're already talking about the third wave and people are working remotely. So we've already seen some insurance companies asking the question, how do I get my staff to work from home permanently? Do I give them a firewall at home? Do we put that into their network and we manage it centrally? And also still giving them their privacy. So, and I think, and you mentioned it earlier, so, so with Poppy coming down the line is what is the responsibility of the organization? What is the responsibility of the user? Uh, Poppy asks you to show that you have put reasonable work behind protecting your network, but what is that in the, in the new world that we look at? So your firewall at the office versus no protection at, at, at the endpoint kind of really changes that. But 
Yeah, the world is changing um, and cybersecurity is probably one of the ones that is adapting the quickest to adapt to the new world. So, so I guess what you're saying there, Stefan, is that we we need to adopt that, that, that broken window attitude. When you review your cybersecurity, that's the way you need to look at it um, because there's, there's constant vulnerabilities and, and I guess you need to be on alert all the time and, and pretend like you're, you, you're under attack constantly. So that broken window approach is something that you need to adopt every day now. Absolutely, it's broken window, broken business, broken policies. So what you need to, to do in this world at the moment is you have to review your, your, your basic fundamentals on the constants. So if you fail to start updating your policies, reviewing your policies, uh, people either entering your, your organization, leaving your organization, just leaving one individual's credential open could really, in this uh, financial struggling financial times, bring down your business. I don't think there's one business out there at the moment that can afford downtime with the likes of ransomware, or even having to pay a ransom for, for that for that matter. Um, so cybersecurity is definitely a thing that we'd have to go down to the bare fundamentals, do it right, and fix the small broken cracks by building your network before going to advanced threat products like sandboxing, NAC, all of these things that's out there at the moment that can really help solidify your posture. But let's just get the posture right. And that's, what I think, the message that we want to give to people is take the time that you have now. Where the majority of the companies aren't busy. Go look at the, the fundamentals before you start having a broken window scenario. Because once the first thing starts showing the vulnerability, the rest of your network will go before someone pays attention for it. Now, we know the dwell time for, for attackers can be anything from 6 to 12 to 18 months, depending on what they need to get off your network or if they just want to hold your ransom. So the world is changing. But yeah, for us, I think uh, we just want to get the message out there to the people saying, guys, look at this, like the broken window theory, police your own environment. We don't have police and uh, call it auditing or looking at our environments for, for any malicious activity. It's up to us at the end of the day to make sure your business is, is safe and secure. Fascinating chatting to you, Stefan van der Geersen, the General Manager for Cybersecurity at Networks Unlimited, talking about what's next in security. Stefan, thank you for those insights and good luck going forward. Thank you, Aki. Have a good day. Cheers.